Inside the 18th episode of Outsourcing Live, I interview the winner of microsourcing competition that we ran a few months back. We also look at a case study on how he outsourced his web services that are targeted for small businesses. Towards the end of this episode, I share with you a fantastic website tracking tool that lets you spy on what people are searching for to reach your website. So let's play it. Welcome to the Outsourcing Live Podcast, where you will learn to build a virtual team to run your business. And now, your host, Tyrone Shum. Hey everyone, it's Tyrone Shum from Outsourcing Live. And in today's podcast, I wanted to get back a person who we actually who actually won the microsourcing competition for $1,000 worth of outsourcing services. And it would be good to be able to get him onto the call because he'll be able to share with us what his experience has been like with microsourcing and what he's got them to do as well. So let me welcome to you Peter Freeman on the call. So welcome to, call, welcome to the call, Peter. Hi everyone. Thanks, Tyrone. Thanks very much for coming on today. Um, it's been a real pleasure and I think since we actually announced the winner of the competition, which is going back almost two months ago now, um, you've been working with microsourcing. So I thought it would be great to be able to share with the audience from your experience of what their company does and also to what you've outsourced to them. Actually, before we do jump into that, I should probably ask you, what is your company so that people can get a, a little background story of you? Sure. Okay, well, as, as you said, my name's Peter Freeman. Um, I run a um, an online business called Web Services for Business. Um, basically, in a nutshell, I guess I, I offer services uh, for small to medium-sized businesses. Um, primarily in the modern web world, I guess you could uh, say it's helping them understand the current uh, web environment and also make the most of their business. So. Traditionally, websites were just business cards. Now it's expected that they're a lot more collaborative, a lot more involved, and and certainly there's the opportunity there to to add a lot more to a business's bottom line. So I guess I'm trying to help small businesses understand that and navigate it. Um, a lot of people are too busy working on their business, working in their business, to to really make the most of their opportunities online. Yeah. And in a lot of cases, they're missing out. Uh, so basically, I use my expertise in that that field to to help them along the way, um, help them bring more to their bottom line, hopefully, um, and help them, I guess, to understand uh, some of the opportunities that are available to them that they may not be otherwise aware of. Mm, just out of curiosity, how did you get into this this um, particular field? It's It's been a little bit of a passion of mine for, for quite a while. Um, I've actually worked in, in larger enterprises, um, still do actually, that this is more of a um, an on-the-side um pursuit of mine at the moment, which is rapidly turning into a full-time one. Uh, <laughs> There's a huge demand enough, for this. The, the demand that's out there is, is quite staggering and the, and the more people I talk to in the small business world, uh, the, the more people are recognizing that they need to be online, they just don't know how to do it. So, mm. um, But yeah, my, my background's in a, in a larger enterprise environment um, and I've been involved in, in several uh, fairly large-scale web projects in, in that role. And the collaborative side of um, the web is, is a big part of my current work practice. And I'm, I'm basically taking that sort of collaborative social type experience into the small business world and helping people make the most of their, their social media aspirations, I guess. That's excellent. It sounds like there's there's huge demand, as you say, about the small businesses and coming from a large enterprise, bringing it down to sort of the mums and dads, I shouldn't really say mums and dads, but the smaller businesses who have just got the day-to-day -day running but just don't have a website or not online, it really opens up that extra door, that new pathway of new customers for them to come through. And I guess you can see where that um, has been branching out. So I guess the thing we, we wanted to find out from you was how has, say for example, teaming up or using the microsourcing services benefit your business? Well, I guess first of all, thanks very much for the opportunity and, and I guess running the competition in the first place, uh, I wouldn't have had the opportunity without uh, the competition you ran. So thanks very much, Tyrone. And I guess thanks. In, in my situation, because I'm in that transition period of, I guess, ramping up the, the business online as well as, I guess, transitioning away from my traditional nine to five role, outsourcing for me is is very much a, an option to scale my business without spending as much time on it and that's obviously 
a, a passion that's, that's fairly dear to your heart, I guess. All right. <laughs> it is. Uh, I guess I, I simply don't have the time to do a lot of the work that I'd like to do, and even if I've got the skills to do it, it doesn't make sense for me to spend the time on it. So, mm. so I guess where, where I came across your materials in terms of outsourcing was really researching where can I get some fantastic skills to do a lot of the work that I would do if I had the time, but I simply don't have the time to do. So I'm I'm, I'm a bit of a selective outsourcer, I suppose, um, and I've only really started doing it recently, um, and and really mostly outsourcing things that I do have skills to do, but um, in having the skills to do it, it does help me in terms of managing the work that comes through. So I guess I'm not going into, um, say, a situation to design a website. I'm not going into that blindly and just accepting what I'm given. I've, yeah. I've got the skills background to understand what uh, should be delivered from an outsource provider. So that's really helpful. But I guess... Coming back to the, the microsourcing scenario, um, they were one that popped up on the radar. There's there's two or three. I think you've you've covered them in various um, aspects on your site. Um, Philippines based outsource providers that do offer a large range of services, quite staggering range of services. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, th- um, there are a lot of them out there. It's just a matter of finding out which one suits your business and also suits you working with them because there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of resources out there that's available it's just coming down to and seeing which one works best it is and and a lot of my work at the moment is project based so i'll, I'll be working with a, a small business say to um t- typical scenario they've got a, a 1999 website that hasn't really been updated for, <laughs> for 15 years or, yep. or how long it's been and it's one of those and, html sites where they, you just click here and it just takes you to another static page yeah, that's it. They're still updating it in front page and all that sort of stuff. So, so I guess, and a, a typical person like that has has got a, a need that they they're aware of. They just don't know mm. how to attack it. So, obviously, I can bring the expertise there, but in my situation, I don't necessarily have the the time to do the whole box and dice. I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, of course. So specific parts of that, whether it be the graphic design or. Um, I typically uh, focus on using WordPress uh, these days. It works well for a small business environment. Um, so essentially, I'll take components of those projects, whether it be graphic design, um, templating the, the WordPress site, um, setting up some of the social media accounts. Those are sort of, I guess, tasks that would break down out of a project that I know how to do it, but it doesn't make sense for me to spend the time on it. So I would take um, tasks like that potentially to someone like microsourcing and and um, outsource that service um, and hopefully bring back a better result for the client in a lot less time because I'm not spending all of that time on it myself. Definitely. So with regards to your business, there's obviously projects there for outsourcing potentially um, skill sets like web design, web development, um, even maybe administration because it does take time to actually process that, like for example invoices and also customers to, to, uh, deal with customer service with your small business as well. So in that process because it is still also as you mentioned at the initial stages of dealing with microsourcing, can you just share with me what the what what did you what was the experience like when you first went through the hiring process with them? So one of the projects, and we're partway through it at the moment, um, was for an ebook design and launch for uh, one of my clients. Yep. So essentially, they've, uh, they've released their own free product previously, and, and they've got a, an ebook, quite a comprehensive one that they're wanting to promote and, and publish uh, on a commercial basis. So essentially, I was looking at the uh, graphical design for the covers. Um, uh, that has been completed. So basically, went through a design brief. Obviously, had a fairly extensive discussion with my client to, to work out exactly what they preferred. Um, got some examples together, things like that, and presented my resourcing's um, head of creative services, uh, Michaela Arche, I think I've pronounced her name right. Yep. Um, presented her with a, a brief on on what we were requiring yep. in terms of the cover. So that was it. Pretty much the initial extent of. Uh, the brief, they, they went off and, and did a little bit of research themselves and, and came back with um, a few questions. So most of this was email communication, yep. uh, which I'm, I was reasonably comfortable with at the time. So I came back and eventually got to the stage after a few um, pieces of email correspondence to a, a couple of initial uh, design concepts uh, for the ebook covers. So 
and that allowed me to then take that back to my client and, and work through, well, okay, which ones do they like, what don't they like, um, what, what sort of usual sort of discussion you would have in terms of a graphics uh, design concept and basically narrowed it down to a point where um, we're reasonably happy with one, one or two of the concepts and they then went a little bit further in terms of the design. So all, all of this was mar- managed directly through uh, Michaela, who's the head of creative design services. Yeah. Uh, and she was working obviously uh, with a graphics design consultant to to get the work done. Okay. And how long did something like this take in terms of a process from the start to delivering something like that to the client? So I have a small confession with that one. Uh, we actually had a major communication breakdown in between and that um, initially I was a bit disappointed because I thought uh, microsourcing was dropping the ball, so to speak. Turned out I actually had an email server issue where uh, my my own email server was bouncing messages. Uh, <laughs> so we had a few weeks delay where it appeared as though um, they weren't able to communicate with me, but it turned out, yeah, I ended up trying a different email address and, and we got back on track. So that was a bit disappointing, but unfortunately, yeah, the, the ball was squarely in my court in that particular case. Technology wasn't um, playing ball. But, yeah, outside of that delay, um, I was I was very impressed with the, the speed of the communication back and forth, um, even allowing for time zone differences and so forth. Um, obviously, being in Central Australian time, uh, there's not too much difference, but enough to, I guess, make you look at the clock every every time you send an email. Or, Will I get a reply today or tomorrow? Um, so I guess that's that's one of the small challenges. But given, even if you're dealing with people in the same time zone, you may not get replies same day or, or next day. So that side of it didn't really worry me at the time. So they were quite responsive um, in replying back to your emails and getting the, the ebook back to you? Yeah, definitely. And certainly concepts. Um, at one stage, uh, we sort of went down a track with one concept that wasn't really working. And we figured that out after a little while with, with my client. And basically, they, off their own, own back, decided to scrap that particular concept and, and try a couple of different ones. Um, that was quite impressive to me. Um, often, graphics designers get a little bit possessive of their work and, and they don't really want to change too much. Yeah, I know that fact. So I, I was pretty impressed with that that approach that they took. Um, so we, we've ended up with a, a very nice uh, finished product that we're, um, we're now working on uh, the launch phase of it. So That's excellent to hear. So pretty much from the start to now getting to launch phase, um, you, you got them to design an ebook and you work with Michaela, was it that you said? Yes. Michaela uh, being the creative director. So pretty much the process is handled by someone who's a supervisor or lead manager or somebody like that that will get the work done. Oh, sorry, get the work delegated and then from there they have their team of people who would just go and get the work done. Um, if that's what I understand that whole process was. It, it was in this particular yeah. case and that, that worked very well and I guess I'm in a position... Uh, I've got had the experience, I guess, where I'm managing staff and, and managing projects where uh, that communication with whether it's business managers or whether it's, um, I guess, other people that are interfacing between you and the people that actually do the work, hmm. those people are absolutely critical. If you, if you haven't got the right person in that particular role, it makes it very difficult because um, often, I mean, in, in this particular case, it, in a traditional sense, it might have been my client dealing directly with the graphics designer. So by adding myself and also Michaela into the mix, it's really important that we actually do a better job with the communication, I guess, yes. because it, there is an extra couple of links in the chain. Definitely. Um, so I, do I, I, I was quite impressed with, with Michaela's approach there and, and certainly the output was very good. Excellent. So how has this experience of going through microsourcing changed your, I guess, mindset and also changed your business for outsourcing overseas now? Because this would be your first time, is that correct to say? Very much so. I was, I was very much at the at the point of seriously investigating it, but hadn't really got enough information to jump in with both feet, I guess. So, so this has given me a real opportunity to try a few different things. I've got a couple of other uh, jobs that um, I'll be pushing through the the team as well in in a couple of different areas. So, I guess my perspective on it has certainly. Um, certainly a positive one um, but as I said I, I'm probably more comfortable with outsourcing work that I am capable of doing myself uh, just from a level of understanding um, of the process and what I can expect out of it I guess that's that's my, more my own comfort level than anything mm. um, and as things progress obviously may branch out into other areas of, 
uh, skill sets that I don't have, um, graphics design being one of them. I'm not a, not a graphics designer. I'll put my hand up very quickly and say <laughs> I'm really bad at graphics design. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll put the website together from the graphics, but the design work, I'll leave that up to the people that are good at it. So you're more um, attuned to the technical side of things where you get a, like a PSD file of a Adobe design and then you can just lay it out into say like a WordPress uh, WordPress blog. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And that, that's what I've done for a number of clients so far. And again, that's a component of work that could be outsourced as well. But I guess I'm reasonably comfortable with outsourcing some of that work particularly because I've, it's, it's easy for me to spot issues um, as they come up and I guess talk the right language to get things done and that's that's one of the challenges I think with um, anyone that goes down whether it's the outsourcing path or, or doing it in person with with a local provider is is being able to communicate your needs and also be able to verify that the product you're getting back is actually a, a good one. Um, Particularly in a technical field, it's it's pretty easy for t- for technical people to pull the wool over the eyes of of customers. Um, unfortunately, it does happen too often, but it's it's comfortable for me. I guess there's a high comfort level in in knowing that I can speak the technical language with the the people that are doing the work for me, which is very very important. I wanted to ask you as well in terms of quality of quality control. Um, how did you how did you find that whole process because you know, you, you sent over a, a design over to, or a conceptual design over to, to Michaela and Michaela went out over to the graphic designer and as you mentioned, they delivered a, a great work and your client was happy with it. But was there any stage during that process where that you thought, okay, there's some quality issues here, I'm not happy with it or the client's not happy with it? Were there any of those kind of challenges that you faced? Uh, perhaps initially and I, I guess it's more from being new to the process and and having to communicate our way through it. But initially, um, a couple of the uh, concepts that came back, uh, because they were concepts, and I guess in terms of dealing with graphics designers, it's important to understand the difference between a concept and a finished product. Um, but a few of the concepts that came back, initially my client was, she sort of looked at them and, and thought, well, uh, hang on, maybe this kind of looks like something you could do yourself sort of thing. But as I said to her, it was, it's kind of, different between the concept and the finished product so it was basically looking primarily at things like fonts and colors and um, how they matched up with graphics on the cover of the ebook and, and things like that so the difference between some of those concepts and the finished product is quite significant but I guess initially the perception of um, of someone that's not used to it um, may come to it and say well hang on that's that just looks fairly low grade, I'm sort of not interested in continuing. So it's important to, I guess, have that conversation with, in this case, it was with Michaela to confirm a few details around what would be in the finished product as opposed to the, the concept. Yeah, oh, that's good. All right, well, it sounds like things went quite well for you with microsourcing. On a scale of maybe 1 to 10, just for people who are interested in listening, how would you rate microsourcing's customer service and overall process that you've been dealing with? Well, certainly, in my experience, I'd, I'd put them up around a seven or eight, um, mainly become, I guess, partly because I'm a harsh marker. But... <laughs> no, that, that's an honest one. I mean, that's that's the reason for this whole case study review because I guess at the same time, both Microsourcing and yourself want to be able to, to be honest about what's going on and um, I want to also make sure that people in the market are aware of what's going on with Microsourcing too and this is a really good you know review. So yeah, seven yeah, out of ten. So, so good. Seven or eight, I guess. What what I'd be keen to do, um, and as I said, I've got a few other tasks queued up because I haven't used up all of the the free um, outsourcing offer yet. Yeah. Uh, I do have another number of different, not necessarily graphics design, but a couple other um, pieces of work that I'll be keen to get them to do. So um, partly to test the waters on my part, and I, I'm sure that um, as we work through them and possibly dealing with a couple of different staff in their team, um, I'll get a good good understanding of what they can offer but certainly yeah the experience i've had has been one that i would certainly um, use them again and, and probably recommend to other people um, get into it as well that's great yeah that that was actually my next question was whether or not you'd recommend it to people and also use their services again so you've kind of answered that one for me which is great <laughs> anticipating <laughs> anticipating yes well i'm curious as well say for example you're going to be um 
still working with them over the next few weeks depending on what projects you're getting in place with microsource team what are your plans with them uh once you've done that will you be continuing on like a a one-on-one project or will you look be looking to hire someone full-time what are your your intentions or your plans i've started investigating that with uh philip who's the ceo and also with michaela just to investigate options for staff leasing um where basically i mean in my particular case i with a lot of the work that I'm, I'm seeing at the moment, um, both web development with WordPress and also graphic design are two major components of the work I'm doing. Um, I guess the, the reason that they're the two main ones is that I really want to spend more of my time talking and working with my clients rather than in the back room doing all of the technical work. So um, the, the important part for me is to spend that time and, and help them understand where they need to go with their business online uh, and so forth. So... A couple of main components that I need, but it may be a lot of work one month and less work in another month. So I'm, I'm investigating that with with my resourcing at the moment to see if I can set up a um, a couple of key staff that I can call on, develop a relationship with in a working sense, and do that on an ongoing basis. So I'm looking at those options at the moment. I've got some information through that I'm digesting at the moment. So depending on how things go with with the other work, I'll be. Uh, sending their way i'm pretty keen to pursue that option good stuff yeah no that's great i just it'd be good to see how that progresses maybe in six to 12 months time we'll see how that's worked out for your business and come back to to another sort of review or case study on this one yeah absolutely because things do change over time and you may go in one path or you may stick with uh, microsourcing which i'm hoping you do because that's a great thing you know you've already established that relationship and things seem to be still going very very well for you so i'm glad to hear that all right. Well, before I do wrap up, any final comments about what you've done? Any anything you can share about the whole process? And um, yeah, any final things that you want to say? Well, I think the the clear thing to me, and I guess it's not just an outsourcing thing. It's really dealing with any any form of contract uh, contractual relationship, whether it be outsourcing or whether it be one of your own staff. Uh, being very clear about what you're wanting in terms of output. Is, is really important um, and I guess add to that the, the distance issue with um, your outsourcing provider being in another country potentially. Um, certainly, I didn't have any issues from a communication perspective and I think you mentioned... Except for the emails. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But, <laughs> but we know what happened there. That's okay. That's yeah, I'm sure microsourcing would probably rate me about a two on the scale <laughs> that particular two or three-week period. But, but yeah, I guess yeah, be, being very clear about what you're, you're wanting um, and not being afraid to, to state that. I think some people are a little bit concerned they might um, get someone offside by... So sort of telling them exactly what they want in terms of a contract relationship, but uh, it's really important for for both parties to be very clear about what they can and can't do and, and what they need out of the relationship. Um, and I guess check up on references as well. I've, I've done a little bit of research on on other people that are, are using microsourcing as well. Um, so I guess my comfort level is is increasing the more I deal with them, but also the more that I I see elsewhere. So um, I guess yeah. Open and transparent with your expectations is probably the main thing that I would pass on as advice to anyone looking to deal with, with any outsource provider. Hey, that's excellent advice, especially checking the references. I think that's crucial, not just checking for references of the person that you're working with, but other clients that they've dealt with is very, very important. And that's where the true yeah, the true um, case studies really do come out and also the true things that do happen because <laughs> <laughs> exactly. that, that's where they work with them. That's great. Excellent. Well, Peter, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a real pleasure to be able to catch up with you and find out what's been happening with yourself and also microsourcing. And I do wish you all the best with this and we'll definitely be catching up soon, hopefully sooner than later, maybe in the next in the new year of 2012. That would be fantastic. Awesome. I certainly appreciate your time and, and thanks once again for the, the opportunity. You're welcome. Anytime. It's time for the Outsourcing Live Quick Tip. Today's tool that I'm going to be recommending for you is something that you can just install onto your website whether it be a WordPress site or just a HTML static site. Now, if you're using a HTML static site, I'd recommend switching over to something like WordPress which is a lot more dynamic. Anyway, if you're looking to track 
what's happening on your website in a lot more detail and also in real time. This is tool called Get Clicky and you can actually download it at getclicky.com. Now, this tool has been one of the by far one of the best tools that I've used in the past for analytics and tracking of a website. I have to also say, I have to thank this to Pat Flynn from the Smart, Smart Passive Income who actually recommended it to me this months and months ago and I've only had a chance to actually reveal this to everyone because the fact is, is that I've been using this myself just to test and make sure that it has been doing exactly what it does and I've been actually able to find out where people are coming from, exactly the location, the place and the time that they're tracking on even to an extent if they've got some kind of registered details on their PC or their Mac, who they are and it's very interesting to be able to see because you'll see that there are a lot of people coming from all over the world. Not only that, you can also find out exactly what they're typing in, in say for example the Google search engines or Yahoo search engines or even Bing to see exactly what they're finding and how they're landing on your page. So for example, if people were typing in the word outsourcing on Google and they actually land onto outsourcinglive.com, I can actually see that in Google, oh, sorry, in Clicky and it will tell me exactly when they arrived, from which IP address they're coming from, also how long they're staying on the site and so forth. Not only that, it's actually real time as I mentioned at the beginning. Basically, as soon as someone types it in, it somehow tracks it immediately and therefore I can see exactly who's coming onto the site. And furthermore, it's very, very comparable to Google's Analytics which is free and both GetClicky and Google Analytics are free to install and use. It actually allows you to be able to see what the bounce rates are, the average time people are staying on your site and also all the different actions that are taking place on your site and that's really powerful because you can use this to be able to help you determine certain goals and also determine certain tracking things for, that you might need for your business. So if you're like a business such as an e-commerce website and you'll need to know exactly what people are searching on for you, then you can use those keyword searches that people are finding on and optimize for those because obviously if more of those are being searched online for you, then it means that those keywords are the, people, are the keywords that people are looking for and that's how they're coming to your site. So check it out. You can download it and set it up onto your actually uh, you can actually install it using a WordPress plugin which is available as well at um, getclicky.com and once you install it onto WordPress, it's very easy to set up. Just enter in three different details and bang, you're up and away and it'll start tracking it immediately. So that's how easy it is to use and it's an awesome tool that I highly recommend. Now, if you like more resources like this one, you can find them inside Mass Outsource Mastermind along with video tutorials and step-by-step -step instructions showing exactly how I use them. To get a 30-day no-risk trial membership to Mass Outsource Mastermind, simply visit freevideoset.com. Until next time, I wish you success in your quest for outsourcing.